All right. Um, let me start with the introductions of myself now, now that um, we've talked about introductions of yourself. Um, if you haven't had me before, uh, um, uh, Anvita, then um, I, I got my bachelor's in, and maybe I should have you give this. Um, you should have it memorized by now. Uh, this is a third class. So I, I got a bachelor's in computer engineering and then a master's and a PhD from Brigham Young University out in uh, Provo, Utah, so I don't have a southern accent. So it's in Alabama, right? No, uh, Utah. Okay. In, in, the, in, the, in the Rocky Mountains. I'm sorry, what? Near Washington, right? Uh, so Washington borders the states of Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, it, um, Arizona, it's yeah. Kitty Corner with New Mexico and Nevada. Um, so it's about one state or two away. But if you're driving to Washington, you would go through Utah. Okay, It's very pretty, both north and south. Um, Utah have their own distinct areas. I was surprised as a student, I went to southern Utah with my family on vacation and how many different languages I heard everyone speaking. I realized, oh, people came from all over the world to go see Southern Utah, so you, you might already be familiar with that. Um, so, um, so I'm curious, and online people can submit this in a discussion, but why are you taking this course? Because it fit because you had a, a Tuesday 9.30 class and you had this opening, or You've always wanted to take this course. You signed up for it last summer, and it was canceled. And you were, and you cried for 24 hours, and then you were set happy when it was offered again. But um, for me, there was no other option other than DBMS and software project manager. Okay. This was the only course I had. Yeah, this is actually my last semester, so I okay. have to take two courses, and I'm from actually software development field. So there's only one course left, I need to complete this, and then I graduate. And also, I did this course in my undergraduate in the engineering. Great, we're going to have you teach this class then, because I think you're, you're ahead of all of us, OK? Great, OK? Um, so um, this morning, for the face-to-face uh, uh, -face section, I emailed out um, a link to this calendar. I'll email the online section after I post the video um, to, to this calendar. Did you check your email in the last hour? Okay. Um, so the, the yellow indicates the day that I uploaded the calendar. Could be the same day. It won't be ahead of the same day to help you orient and know when I updated it last. Uh, but it's also to indicate today. The, I've looked at Google calendars and other things, but there, I just want to be real clear about expectations for before class, what we're going to cover in class, and this will become a, a link with a little uh, video icon um, after the video is posted in case you wanted to review something or you know hear my jokes again. And, um, and then uh, due means it's going to be due typically that day, Eastern time. You choose the time. Um, with the caveat is I'm, I've put on the schedule for this semester all of the uh, times at Cougar View maintenance. It, it starts uh, whenever that's there on 10 p.m. on Friday. So I don't want you to get caught with an assignment even if it was due. If it's due at 10 p.m. on Friday or midnight on Friday, it's effectively due 10 p.m. because it, Cougar View may be down from 10 to midnight. So just a heads up, and that'll help you with your other projects to say, oh, this is due Saturday at noon, but Cougar View could be down from 10 p.m. till 7 a.m. And just know that that's the case, okay? Um, this will get updated, and um, it will automatically scroll forward so that you have a, a view of at least one week in advance. If you have questions about uh, topics in the future or scheduling things, let, let me know about them, okay? Um, if you haven't taken a course from me before, uh, let me cover the syllabus. If you have, you can just 
start working on the first assignment. Um, I've got my office hours posted here. This graphic is also on my door. If you come to my door, here is the, the textbook, required textbook for the class. This is a wonderful resource in part for this other one, the Software Measurement and Estimation uh, by Steve McConnell. You might recognize him and the um, branding from Code Complete, of which he's probably most famously known for. Um, but the way he wrote this book is just, one, it's, it's data-driven. There's a lot of statistics and citations to support what he's saying, and it just flows real nicely. So you might, um, you might uh, use that textbook. Baharsh, um, did you use either of these in your course? I think the writing. Okay. You, you, you think you may maybe have used this one? I think so. Okay. Okay. I expect you to read this on your own. I'm not going to go over all of it, but I just wanted to highlight some of them. Uh, I expect everyone to know how to use Cougar View. If not, uh, let me know. Um, I do not use Cougar View email. Okay, so if you send it there, I, I will probably never see it. Um, if you're in a face-to-face -face lecture, um, I have what I refer to as a cell phone policy. Okay, Prahash, do you want to explain what the cell phone policy is? So, the policy is that if your phone rings in the class or anything, or I've added, or makes a noise. Uh, yeah, makes a noise, then uh, you have to bring uh, something, uh, as a cookie or food. Or Cookies, brown. For, <laughs> for everyone in the class, and it will be graded yeah, from yeah. negative 10 points to zero. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, the sweet, uh, the tasteness of the... You know, how ripe it is, how soft yeah. and chewy. Okay. And I'll, I'll let you... Think about why it's strictly negative scores that are allowed and no positive scores. Um, you're smart, and um, that would inflate grades. It be, wouldn't be fair to the online people. I, I don't know. Maybe they could share bitcoins or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, the last day to drop this class and not have it affect uh, money or your transcript is tomorrow, Friday, the January 26th. Okay. Um, attend every class, view every lecture, read every textbook assignment that will help you succeed and let you know the material covered. Uh, feel free to take notes during class and while you read or while you watch something. I, I take notes during church. I, I don't know, I've rarely referenced them, but the act of taking them engages me more it, it helps me understand the topic, and, and I see it. If I see something, I can remember it more clearly. That works for me. Um, and for other people, um, other techniques are going to work better. Um, I, I meet a lot of people um, in my life, and I found that if I write down their name, even if it's on my palm, I am far more likely to remember their name and be able to pronounce it correctly. So. Um, if, if you feel like, oh yeah, that would help me too, well, feel free to adopt that, not only for meeting people and getting their names, but also for class taking notes, etc. Um, in computer science, you really can't say, I'm half done with a project. Uh, usually the requirements are not independent of each other, and they build off of each other. And so with an essay or a sculpture, you could say, oh, I'm 50% done. Um, but with a computer science project, it, it may be the first 10% of the requirements it takes 90% of the work or vice versa. You think you have everything done, you're just, you have this last 10% and uh, there's some misunderstanding and it could take 90%. So start early. Um, Find a study buddy to work with, for example. Uh, be careful who you choose. Um, I got together with someone and started studying for a five credit hour class a couple of years ago. And after 16 years, we're, we're still going on strong. So um, do your own work. Let me just take a moment to talk about academic 
um, integrity because it's the first day and that's what we do. Uh, a professor once showed me that if you, you've seen this three times now, twice, um, if you have your hands on your, your legs and your eyes closed, you're probably not, now you're smart so you can think of it, but you're probably not committing academic uh, misconduct. So what can you not do if you've got your hands on your legs and your eyes closed? You can't be reading other people's yeah. codes or projects. Uh, you can't be reading it off the web and using it. You can't be typing what you see from somebody else and you can't be transferring files, okay? All of those are academic misconduct. Um, what can you do if your hands are under your legs and your eyes are closed? What can we do? Yes. Write uh, out answers. You could write, but you might not be able to read it later, right? You could, you could say what, what you're trying to accomplish, yeah, right? Um, but if you're, if you're stuck, for example, okay. what, what can you do but in this position with hands under legs and eyes closed? You can think. True. Good. That's probably the first line of defense. What else can you do? Well, try it. Okay, hands under, hands off your keyboard, and your eyes closed. What what can we do? What's the situation about? Is it during an exam or? Oh, uh, more of a project. I I think I think exam situations are more clearly defined on what's academic misconduct and not. You don't look at somebody else's screen. You don't search the internet. Yeah. This is more for projects and, and assignments. So if you, you can breathe, yes, yes. That's maybe that's an un, undervalued strategy. Take 10 deep breaths. Uh, it'll change your perspective. I like that. So, but some other things that were said were you can talk, you can reason, you can think, and you can listen. So you can talk about your problems. For example, uh, um, I wanted to apply this, this tool. I was applying it and I'm getting a zero. That doesn't make any sense. There, I don't see any feasible way to get a zero. And you could talk about, well, did you do this? Did, did you put all the files in their, in their own directory? Oh, I didn't realize you needed it. Yeah, you needed it. And you can talk about the issue at a high level and that's generally that's almost always that's almost never academic misconduct if you're just talking about it thinking through it and conversing verbally you're you're okay but if we're transferring files when it's not group work or posting or sharing that that very well could be academic misconduct it's the least favorite part of my job and the students probably least favorite part um, and they they not only like they they not only don't like talking about it but they also don't like the zero um, on their grade okay hopefully you've learned by now what to do when you get stuck because one you haven't made it this far without getting unstuck hundreds of times um, but maybe just the discussion will help formalize it or see it in a new light um, isolate the problem. If you're trying to estimate some software, don't go download a million line code project, do a hello world project or something with a, a few files, something you can quickly, easily wrap your head around um, and see can, can you replicate the problem. Search for answers. Um, come see me if, if you've tried the other steps. Send me an email saying, I tried this, I expected this, but I've got this. Um, and, and it usually helps to send actual code or output. Um, here is a copy of the commitment to meeting the graduate program's academic dishonesty policies. I assume that you're in that one. Uh, you can't sign it yet. Because in number two, it says you have to take a training or a quiz. Oh, okay. okay, so you can't just sign it without reading it. 
Um, but you need to fill that out. And then um, it needs to go to Shamin Khan. Either scan uh, scan it and email it to him if you're going to do that. CC him, CC me, sorry, or um, let me know that you turned it into him. You'll get credit uh, as an assignment for having done that. Okay. If you've already turned one in as a graduate student, let me know that you've already turned one in. Okay. So that's that's probably the easiest points of the whole semester. Oh, I forgot one of my favorite parts on to clearly define academic misconduct. This wonderful uh, lab partner of mine, uh, who's now a life, <laughs> life partner, um, we took, oh, I don't know, 60 credits together or something. And we always turned in two assignments, except there was this one group assignment. It was awesome. It was embedded software design, and we had this Tetris game. I was really excited for that group work. Other than that, we, we had two projects that we turned in, and they were different. Now, we talked about it, and we reasoned together, and we helped each other at a high level, but our code was distinct. They were the products of, of each one of us, and um, so that, that just helps you understand it. If I took a class, class with my spouse and we turned in two different things, I would expect acquaintances to turn in uh, clearly two different things, or even friends. Okay? Awesome. Uh, miscellaneous things, pick good passwords. Okay? Uh, the, the weakest link in, in an organization is, uh, is the only one that needs to be exploited. Um, if there's anything that prevents you from being successful in this class, lack of food, housing, study habits, or, or you know somebody that fits those, let, let's talk. There, there are resources to be able to address that. Okay, so let's look at that schedule again. What are we doing today? Okay, we've done the syllabus uh, and introduction to the class. Now I want to cover uh, chapter one from the textbook. You'll notice that it's hyperlinked here indicating that there's a PDF that's publicly available. So if you haven't ordered the textbook, there's chapter one and um, uh, the front matter, the table of contents is also available. But so that, that should help in um, if you don't have the textbook yet, okay? I've tried to put the pages by it so you can have a better estimate of, okay, this is a big reading assignment. Oh, I could knock this out in the elevator, you know, just based on w what it is, okay? Give you an estimate. Okay. I'm going to take some notes and then post these notes. Oh, that's probably too big. And today's the 25th. Welcome to class. Okay, so we're, this whole class is about software um, estimation and measurement. So let's set the stage. Let's suppose you're a software engineer responsible for building a new system. You need to tell the sales team how much effort it's going to take and how soon it's going to be ready. You have a re relatively good requirements specified. You've got a good team of five young engineers. And um, they say, hey, w w all we need is four months and we'll be ready to deliver it. So as the, the software manager, what are you going to say? You're just going to say, well, my team says four months, so it must be. Do you just accept their estimate? Kind of makes you wonder how did they get their estimate, and so we're we're going to talk about how to quantify that, and how to derive that th this semester. Okay, let's think of another scenario to to paint the state the 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 setup for the class. So um, again, you're in the role of a software manager. That's the the role that really this class is geared towards. That you're leading a large project and you're trying to get a handle on it. 
um, and you're trying to make a decision. Uh, you've looked at the data. It tells you that there's about eight bugs for every thousand lines of code left in the system. So do you say, yeah, we're good to go? Okay. But the CEO is saying, hey, we've got to deliver. We got to deliver. Can we? Can we? Can we do it in a month? So th th these are some questions that we'll be able to answer as the, the semester goes on. Um, has anybody worked on a large software project? Or let me put it differently. What's the largest software project you've been involved in? If you could quantify it in terms of how many people, or how long, or how many lines of code, or how many files, can you quantify it anyway? And was it a school project? Was it an internship? Was it for the government? You're not allowed to say. A personal open source contribution. I think in the last semester, we have taken the same course. The object-oriented development. Okay. We have, we have uh, developed the model view control experiment. Okay. The model view controller. Okay. And then uh, we're having different topics we have to choose. Like mine was uh, library inventory management system. So it was like, uh, you know, do uh, search for the books, create, uh, like, order the books for, from the library. The question was can. Uh, <coughs> so did, did you look at how many lines of code that was? How many files? How many objects? Can you quantify there are it? 10 to 12 functions. I mean, there are, I created class diagram and uh, use case diagram. Okay. We used like two, three, two to three design patterns, yeah. and then it was a group project, uh, but then uh, we did it independently. Yeah. No, that was a small project. Yeah, I did the main part individually, okay. so I didn't, I didn't work in a group. Yeah. So, so how big were the groups? Individuals, two? So I think three. Three because people? Two or three. Like, uh, an individual can do like one to three. Okay. So when we talk about projects in this class, it could be a, um, a small, highly specialized team, like three. It could be a large project. Um, I was working on a manuscript this morning, and I was uh, going over a revision of it. And um, for that project, it was 1.9 million lines of code was the whole the package I was working on, I modified 54,000 lines of that code, or, or 54,000 lines of that code was modified in the um, course of this project. Now, the project was largely led by me with some um, scientific support, mostly from uh, my co-authors, but that's a large project, small group, but large project. Now, the, the platform that it's been developed on has been in existence for 20 years, and that's how it got to 1.9 million lines of code, right? I, I didn't write the 1.9 million. Um, and uh, a large team. And so, um, so those are kind of two ends of the spectrum. And of course, there's larger projects as well. Um, and so, uh, um, and there, there's some difference for small, medium, and large projects. It's 10 o'clock. But keep that in mind as we talk about projects. What size of project are we talking about? Are we talking about the 1 million lines of code size project? The, you know, million to hundreds of millions of dollars budget project? Are we talking about a startup company trying to get their first product out, you know, in, in the tens of thousands, hundred thousand lines of code? Okay. Um, how did, how has your grouped projects gone before? Did did you estimate how long how far along you were how how it was going, or just kind of coded as fast as you could because you you wanted to sleep eat and do other things? It took like three weeks or two weeks. Okay, four weeks, two weeks. Okay, so that that's a very short term project. Yeah, it was a short term project. Okay. But I mean, it's got to fit within a semester. Yes. And the longer the project goes, the, the more potential, potential there is for hazards and whatnot. And so in an academic setting, 
that could be expected. Whereas um, in, in industry, uh, it could be a, a year time frame or four months time frame easily, or at least to the next revision, the, the next release. Okay, um, I have some exercises here. I want you to take a, a moment and discuss this with your neighbor. You can choose anybody else in the class that you wish. And I want you to discuss, uh, for the last 10 years of software projects, these three things. What do you think the percentage of all software projects that were canceled? Okay, so now then number two, those that weren't canceled, how many were delivered on time, within budget, and with about the originally specified features? And then three, how much did they go over or under the budget? as a percentage of the, the project. So this is aggregating like all software projects over a decade, small, medium, and large. And so I want you to think about this for a moment. All right, so what do you, what do you think? And this won't be graded, it will be recorded, but won't be graded. So what do you think for all software projects that are canceled? Uh, maybe 50%. Okay. So it depends on uh, what source you, you cite, but uh, like in chapter one of the textbook, it says 23%. So, but I mean that, yeah, over, over a, so this isn't, yes, that's to say this is looking at a large time frame. So it's not just, you know, the dot com buster boom or, you know, the advent of some language it's looking over a large time frame so it should be a very robust statistic um, but 23 percent can you imagine how many companies said hey we're going to do this project or this product or some government organization we're going to offer this and they get canceled could you imagine canceling 23 not well not completing 23 percent of your projects as assignments you would not be graduating. Um, that's, that's just ridiculous. That's un, unthought of um, as a student, okay? So 20, 23%, which just is amazing. So we'd do well in the industry to reduce that, okay? Okay, so of the 75% or so that are completed, how many are on time within budget and have the original uh, feature set. What's your guess? Like most of the projects, if the aim and everything is right, like most of them will be time. So statistically, 28. So I wanted you to come up with the numbers so that you could see a difference between, so it's 28% of those that weren't canceled, were within budget, on time, and delivered as promised. So, um, so 28% of 77%. So we're we're not doing very well. So we're we're like one fifth of all projects. So if you were hiring a company, said hey. Um, would like you to do this project, you could just be thinking in your back of the mind, there's 20% chance this is going to be delivered as agreed on time. Um, and, and we're going to talk about ways that we can improve this. Okay. So, so then there's a lot of projects that weren't within budget. So then that last one, the average software project overran the budget by what percent? So if they had a budget of a... The second one, they took more time and within, okay, so within budget, it's just 27%. Uh, percent. So, so number two was 28%. 28, yeah, so the third one would be like 40%, I guess. So, so this is if you had a million dollar budget, when they actually delivered, what, what was it? Okay. That, that's what this question was, as a percentage, because... So the, the, 
according to the statistics presented in the textbook, 45% more. So if that's a, a million dollar project, how much was billed at the end? 1.45 million dollars then is 45% more. So they said, hey, we want you to develop this project. Well, um, you say, well, how much do you think it will cost? They said a million. We said, okay, go. And they came back and said, you know, <laughs> it was a little harder than we thought. We ran into some um, challenges. We need 1.45 million. That's a lot more money. Okay. Um, so when we talk about software estimation, estimation and measurement, we what we mean is an understanding the activities and risks involved in software development. Okay, so we can appreciate. Okay. The, so here's some of the, the challenges that exist. We're talking about predicting and controlling these activities. We want to be able to manage the risks involved. Okay, A lot of business is about managing risks. So what are the risks? What are the chances of it happening, uh, etc. And we, we want to be delivering reliably. If you want to keep customers and earn new customers, you need to be able to deliver and deliver when you say you're going to deliver. And we need to be managing proactively so that um, we can avoid a, a crisis situation. Okay. Um, so the, the bottom line is that you must be able to satisfy your customer, right? We're taking the standpoint of um, you're a software manager, a project lead um, it, uh, is the, the role that we're primarily going to be talking about in this class. So we have a customer and know what you will spend in being able to do that, okay? So that you, you can um, set the budget accordingly. Okay, so to be able to do these things, to predict and control effectively, you must be able to measure, okay? You, you, you won't be able to do this you, you can't be able to predict and control if, if you can't measure what is going on. To understand the development process, you must be able to measure. Okay? And to understand and evaluate quality, you must be able to measure that quality. Okay. And so what we're going to be talking about here is um, how to, in this class, we're going to be talking about um, manage by the numbers. Okay. We're going to get data and we're going to talk about how to, to use those that data. So to effectively, and we'll say manage by the numbers is a, a phrase, and better ensure the success of your software projects. Okay. Uh, today's class is a little bit shorter. It's the first day to give you a taste. So that's what I have for today. Okay.